you again. Back for five games, five minutes from www.aconelectron.co.uk. Baron is an arcade adventure from Superior Acon Soft, a name usually resplendent with the very best games the Acon Electron has to offer. Not so here. Baron is awful, an absolute travesty of a game. The story runs that you are an impetuous youth seeking to rescue a wizard. To get to him, you need to navigate all 133 rooms of a castle and find his spellbook, wand, crystal ball and ring. Scattered around are also various other objects and energy bags and a whole lot of tough guards. Some things, such as how to kill these guards, simply defy explanation. The instructions tell you to jump and shoot them between the eyes. One time out of a hundred, this works. The other 99 times it doesn't, and kicks off possibly the most frustrating chain sequence of energy draining leaping and firing loops that you will ever encounter in a graphic adventure. I mean, it's simply surreal. This makes this game bloody awful. Add to this the fact that it's slow and it's dull, and what Superior was thinking when they released this, we can only guess. Ghouls is perhaps a quintessential platform game. It's only got four levels, and you have to run left and right collecting power jewels. You need to make it from the bottom left to the top right hand corner, and there are spikes to jump, bridges to cross, and spiders to run underneath. The game's not particularly varied, and only having four level layouts is actually quite poor indeed, even if they do introduce more baddies once they wrap around. The game also demands timing skills that not all players are going to possess, particularly when you have to perch on the end of the platforms that expand and retract. There's also an irritating random element in the position of the ever-present ghoul. Sometimes he starts off quite close to the player, or just in a position where he is harder to avoid. Because he moves quite slowly, you have to stand still to lure him out of his planned route. The graphics are nicely defined, and there's a sort of charming feel to the game, even though it did look dated back in the 80s. It's relatively easy to complete it once you know how, and your only reward is a Pac-Man-style animation. Still, what more could you want, eh? Ziggy is a strange but original 3D maze game designed with a bleak projection. It's all done in monochrome with very detailed graphics, and you control the character Ziggy, who is half man, half pogo stick. Each level consists of four screens, which you can move between by walking over an arrow. You're on a quest to collect all the pyramids on a particular level. When you've got them all, you can move to a square labelled up to go on to the next one. Somewhat weirdly, on higher levels, you can also move over squares to go back down. The skill of the game is in bouncing over hazards. This is achieved by holding down one key to jump, and then clearing one, two, or three of the blocks as appropriate, then pressing yet another key to slow down the jump until you're stationary again. It's a fine art to master, particularly as the game isn't particularly responsive to key presses. In fact, all of Ziggy is just a tiny bit cumbersome. There's a screen designer included with it though, so it does get a few more brownie points. Now with this one I have to declare an interest. Sunday is a game which I wrote myself, based on a particularly horrific date I went on when I was 14. You start off on Saturday night and have to organise, plan and choose your weapons for a date with one Sally Roberts. Somewhat annoyingly, she then brings her sister along. This leads to all manner of immature arguments over everything from sneaking into an age-restricted movie, choice of film and acceptable standards of behaviour. The game is somewhat self-satirising and contains lots of scenes. Playing it through takes about an hour. However, there are some quite genial moments, such as a fight over hamburgers, a section where Jamie is briefly made invisible, and two extremely sadistic end sequences. As the aim of the game is to achieve the highest score, whether Jamie ends up dead or not is almost an irrelevance. Sunday is a little bit like The Secret of Monkey Island for the Electron. It's not as polished as that, but it's every bit as original, and even if the humour is juvenile, it may provoke the odd chuckle or two. Trapper is a very simple, yet extremely addictive little game. You're in a maze with movable walls and an ever-increasing number of monsters that home in on your position. You have to run around, trying to position the walls so that they trap the monsters into a confined square area, then close them up so that it bites the dust. I'm not quite sure what it is about this game that makes it so playable. It could be the smooth action, the animation, the satisfaction of hearing the squelch as you hammer the wall home, or it could even be the masochism of trying to outwit the four monsters before time runs out. What you see is what you get with this game. There are no bonuses, no tunes, 
Nothing but an ever increasing number of monsters in an ever less cluttered maze. It just gets harder and harder until you finally die, usually around level 6. Warning, this game is so addictive it should carry a government health warning.